Hello, everybody. I am here to welcome you to today's vlog in my creaky chair, but I'm also here to shout out the sponsor for this little portion of today's vlog really quick. I'm very excited about it. I love kitchen things, and this is a kitchen thing. <laughs> so thank you. <laughs> that was such a weird way to end, but we're keeping it in. We're keeping it in. Okay? Thank you <laughs> to Water Drop Filter for sponsoring this portion of today's video. So, like I said, I love kitchen things, and I'm so excited to show you guys the water drop filtration system that they sent to me. I just got her all set up and started and I am already loving it. I am so into it. I think that it is just already, already doing it. Waterdrop is an innovative brand dedicated to improving global water quality. It specializes in developing efficient water purifiers aimed at providing safe and clean drinking water, ensuring the health and well-being of you and your family. I have been absolutely loving how convenient this filter system has been. You can get filtered water with one touch and it's super portable. I absolutely love that it has a little handle thing because I have had other filter systems that do not have that. And obviously when you fill it up, it, it's going to be a way heavier situation than when it's not full and having that handle is really, really helpful. We keep ours in the fridge so we can have cool water all the time. It is perfect. It fits perfectly in the fridge. It's like this cute little compact filter. It just goes right on in there. And honestly, it doesn't even get in the way. Like we have so much room for everything else in there too. And what I love is that one charge can last up to 30 days with the indicator showing the filter life as well, which is so easy to replace. So if you want to try it out for yourself, make sure to grab the link down below in the description and you can do so. And thank you once again to Water Drop Filter for sponsoring this portion of the vlog. And now let's go, I'm trying to think, back to the past and then I'll meet you back here in the present, but it's the past for you, but the lesser past, you know, you know, you know. Hi. Uh get ready for an angle change because this is me because I forgot to film an intro. So I just dive, I just, just dove right in <laughs> to the video. This is gonna be a lot. Um, we're reading the romanticy categories for Goodreads. That's it, that's all, let's get started. Hello, I'd like to win an award for the most unflattering angles. Thank you so much. Um, I have made it into 22%. A court this cruel and lovely. 124 pages out of 527. Let's talk a little bit about it. So, hmm. I would say that this is a pretty stereotypical fantasy romance so far. We have the main character who is now on the run and she happens to stumble upon a group of mercenaries that aren't mercenarying. And instead, they, at, after a little bit of a battle, they end up teaming up together because she does have a power that is useful to them as a group. I thought I was gonna get Faye and a court and maybe some court intrigue and drama. That is yet to happen. That is yet to happen. So I already can guess the plot twist and I don't know if it's really that twisty, but it would lead to some fae. But yeah, um, I would say the writing is neither good nor bad. It's just kind of there. It's just kind of there to be read. It is not my favorite. I think just to just so y'all like have a jumping off point, uh, Carissa Broadbent, I think is my all time favorite fantasy romance author. And then Raven Kennedy is close, Sarah Janet, I suppose. Like those are, those are the girls. Um, I need to read more. I honestly haven't read nearly as much. I've read a lot within series, but I haven't read a lot of individual series, if that makes sense. So I'm still trying to expand and this is a good way to kind of do that. I will say, I know a lot of people can get past writing because they like the plot or the character so much. That is the same for me most of the time, but sometimes my brain just latches onto the writing and it just did in this one. Look how 
pay out this forehead is. Okay. So anyways, we're going to take this little party to a coffee shop because I need that <laughs> in my life. And we're going to keep reading. Okay. Okay. Hello, citizens. I come bearing news. Ugh. The train's here. That's beautiful. Perfect timing. Seems to always work out that way, doesn't it? I ended up DNFing a court this cruel and lovely. It was just, it felt so meandering. It felt oddly repetitive, considering it was only a quarter of the way in. And then, cause I did read just like, I think 150 pages or so. And uh, it just felt, I, I don't know. It felt like 150 pages, but also didn't feel like 150 pages. And then some of the things that were starting to happen, I was like, oh, where, where, where's this introduced? And yeah, I'm just gonna DNF it because I've decided, first of all, I have started DNFing this year. Can't stop me. I love to do it now. I used to never, but now I'm into it because honestly, I don't want to read books that I'm not having fun with, you know, because what if that's like the last book I read and it sucked? That would be awful. I've decided that while I set out with the intention of me reading all the way through every single one of these books to give a review. I'm more going to go in line with what I saw Mara from books like Woe say in her live stream of reacting to the Goodreads Choice Awards nominees for the opening round. And I'm going to utilize this as a little reading vlog, but also me reading these books to kind of choose my final book that I vote for in the like end round basically. I did vote for Slaying the Vampire Conqueror because that was the one that I read and thought was best out of the ones that I had read in the category. And that one is the one that I'm essentially holding up. And I'm trying to read the books as their own entities, but I will be comparing them after I review them, if that makes sense. So anywho, you also will now be knowing <laughs> what a weird way to phrase that. I started reading Assistant to the Villain. I have the physical copy right here. And I gotta tell you, I'm only on chapter one. I've read the prologue, already enjoying it more. I think the comedic tone that it has is so fun. I like it. It's feeling comedic, campy, a little bit like, I don't know why it reminds me of a fairy tale movie what was that into the woods where it was kind of not taking itself very seriously i always think of the chris pine song where he like is at the water rips his shirt off all those kinds of things and it's just like what's happening here that has the same vibe as this of just kind of like a silly goofy time and i'm liking it a lot i just think it's it's more maybe what i'm looking for at the time but also I feel like there is a plot that I can understand we're following. Maybe this video will also be me fully understanding what I look for in this sub-genre category because I, I think I'm picky. I think I am picky, but I also think that I do like the structure that some other fantasy romance books I've read have offered. Like, for example, my favorite fantasy romance author of all time is Carissa Broadbent and Daughter of No Worlds has been my favorite book that I have read that is specifically within this genre and I just everything about that was perfection for me. That's kind of my favorite. The Plated Prisoner, the first three books I've read, really liked those two. That's kind of what I'm looking for and I have yet to find but I'm sure we'll find it some other time. I don't think it'll be in this one either. I think this is more of a silly, goofy little time, but I'm not upset to have one of those, you know? Um, right now, I I definitely, I might need that, so. Let's get an ambiance room on. Let's get to reading. And, yeah. Yeah. I do just want to show you this map because I always love a map in a book, but this might be my favorite map that I have seen. Like this is just, if you're wondering what the vibe is, here it is. This is the vibe. 
so far of the book. Oh, I literally cannot express to you guys how happy I am to be able to bring you a happy update about this book. I am nearly halfway through reading this guy. I'm on page 139, chapter 21 is what I am approaching, and I am loving this. I've been trying to figure out the best way to pitch this one, because is there a plot? Not particularly. Uh, it's kind of just them living their lives together and so I really do feel like this is akin to a cozy fantasy with a romance subplot and a little bit of a mystery. So I'm, I'm liking it because I've realized I like cozy mysteries, cozy romances are okay but they're a little too hallmarky for me and cozy fantasy I need a little bit more stakes um, from what I've attempted to read in the genre so that wasn't really for me too much but a cozy mystery that's fantasy based that might be the thing for me because it's going swell in here I'll tell you what uh it reminds me of the same energy that like the princess bride Ella enchanted into the woods it's not necessarily Monty Python with like a bunch of commentary tossed into the humor but it is very dry and like kind of playing up into the stereotypes that the characters fit into of like our main character is supposed to be very you know just human and she should be so scared of the villain and she's not which is like the part that he gets freaked out at we have a dragon in here that is scared of everything and because he's scared of everything he like lashes out kind of reminds me of this boy back here that's exactly what he does too. Just just, just a bunch of anxious boys. I love it. I'm really, really liking this so far. I don't, see this is where I'm trying to like think, do do we as a, a people even know what romantic is? <laughs> Cause I don't really, I don't like fan row. I don't like romantic. I like fantasy romance as a name for it. But I just feel like there are varying degrees of fantasy romance because I also saw someone categorize Crescent City as fantasy romance. And I need, no, that's, urban fantasy <laughs> if anything I don't think that that's fantasy romance at all but like this I can see why people call it fantasy romance but it's not the one that I would normally go for if I was wanting a fantasy romance but it's still a good it's still good honestly and I'm having a great time and I don't know if I just needed a book like this at the time or if it's just a really good one I time will tell or maybe it won't maybe it's just I really do believe in that whole you pick a book up and if it's the right time it's gonna be great if it's the wrong time it's gonna suck uh, so luckily <laughs> I think that I'm at a good time but I'm just looking at the other ones on the lists thinking this it's kind of also how I feel about the Jassad air I feel like that should have just been in the straight-up fantasy even if there's a lot of romance in it I feel like that's still a fantasy book first and foremost especially how it was marketed as well like I don't know. I don't know. That's not what this is about. This is just about reading the books in this category and seeing what's going on. I thought this was going to be a pitiful vlog, y'all. I really did. When I first started and I read that, the court of cruel and light and lovely and things, mm, I thought there's no way I'm going to be able to read 3,000 pages of books like this. Because yeah, I did, when I do a, a video like this with like a set TBR, I total all the pages up, divide it by the amount of days I want to set out to have this being filmed. And so I have to read 172 pages a day. And if it had to be of books like that, it would have been a problem for me. But we've got Miss Carrie Maniscalco on the board, so it's going to be fine. And the Jassad Air, we're going to do so good. I'm curious as why the Phoenix King wasn't on the list. But again, here nor there, we're just going to read our little bookie books and drink our water and I'm gonna go try and sit down and finish this one because we have about two hours before dinner which is I don't know why but after dinner I'm kind of like head empty not really thinking about reading too much until it's 9 p.m. and then I'm like oh my god let me read my entire library don't know what that's about um but I have about half left so let's go see if we can do that Hi, hello, finished a book. 
So I finished Assistant to the Villain last night and I wanted to sit with it for a little bit before I came on here and gave y'all my little review. I gotta say, I don't know what the girls are complaining about. The only thing I could see is that if you go into this thinking it's gonna be a fantasy romance in the stereotypical very serious like we have to learn how to save the world and also to love kind of vibe um that's not here but it, it's so fun and it's just like those other movies and shows or whatever that i mentioned and i think it was a really good time i really really enjoyed this um i don't Hi. I don't really check out Goodreads anymore, except I follow, like, the people that I trust their reviews, and then I do not care about anyone's reviews on the books anymore. Like, I make it a habit to not look at them before or after I finish reading, because I... I don't need to, you know? It's not really necessary. The people that I want to see, I can obviously see, or I've probably watched their vlog where they told me all about it. And that's just better for me. I don't really want all of the world's opinions on the books all the time because half the time I'm like, what are we even talking about here? And I think that this is a case for that of like, I don't know how this was marketed of elsewhere, but where I where I saw this book marketed, it was very much marketed as like a silly goofy time romance that is in a fantasy world. And that's exactly what we got. I can also say that I would recommend the audiobook at any point if you do not want to read this physically. Her allergies are so loud. And when she purrs, they get even loud. Yeah, I'm telling on you. Run away. But I, I would recommend. This was good. This was good fun, jolly good time. I am not entirely sure which book I'm going to pick up next. So we will reconvene once I figure my life out. But this one I'm going to put right under Slaying the Vampire Conqueror. So, so far it's Slaying the Vampire Conqueror. I'm so not happy with Iron Flame that I'm <laughs> putting Assistant to the Villain above, then Iron Flame. No, whoa. <laughs> Hello. Fourth Wing, and then whatever that other one is that I've already, like, deleted from memory because... I don't have the storage space, so why would I keep it? But this was fun. I would recommend it. It was a good time. Hello, guys. We're just gonna have a handheld. I'm holding. I'm holding you right now. <laughs> My hand because I don't want it to fall, but I just wanted to come on and say that I'm gonna start Throne of the Fallen as my next book for this little reading vlog. And uh, yeah, I did not finish off the Kingdom of the Wicked trilogy. I read Kingdom of the Wicked, really liked it, read half of the second book, and I did not actively DNF it. I just forgot I was reading it. So I think that's honestly kind of worse. And didn't really feel like going back to it when I was told that I could read this on its own. So that's what I'm doing. I'm reading it on its own. And yeah, Carrie Maniscalco is one of my authors that I really, really like. Her and Stephanie Garber, I found around the same time with Carval and Stalking Jack the Ripper. Obviously, Carrie Maniscalco is the Stalking Jack the Ripper author, and that's a great series. If you haven't read it, I would highly recommend. The King of the Wicked I really liked because I loved the ambiance. I liked her writing style. The mystery and intrigue was, you know, it was there, but I really was mainly there because I liked the writing style. I really like a purple prose flowery writing style. Although, I feel like if you've read Lainey Taylor, that's, or um, Aaron Morgan Stern, is that her, their name? The Starless Sea and Night Circus author. That's Purple Prose. I feel like Carrie Maniscalco is kind of closer to where Stephanie Garber is, where it's just very flowery, pretty writing and very descriptive and heavy on imagery and scent specifically. So I do I do like that. So I'm, I'm hoping that I like this one. We'll see. I do like that it's a big old book and it's a singular book. I think that that's cool. Obviously, I've not read something like that from her yet because just because I made Kingdom of the Wicked a single standalone book doesn't mean that it really was one. <laughs> So we'll see how this goes. That is quite the first line. Uh, love it. Also love the mic. Uh, shadow. That looks great. Love that. Love that so much. 
Hello. So I am 88 pages into Miss Thorn of the Fallen, and it seems that we have our little Prince Envy who wants to play some game and win the game, and one of the clues is. Is it Camilla? Is that how you say her name? Camilla? Just makes me think of. Team die forever, I'll tell you what. Anyways, so I, uh, I, I, I this is boring. <laughs> Sorry, it just is. This is boring me right now. Um, I'm not interested. I don't particularly care about any of this. The only thing it's got going for it right now is the writing style, but even past that, I don't know. I don't know if I care. Like, I don't know if I care what they're doing. I don't know if I care what's gonna happen. I don't think I care about the, these characters at all. Not even a hundred pages into a 600 page book. So I'm trying to remind myself of that. It's literally like that little sliver at the top is where I'm at. This is what I have to go. So like, that's how much more time she has to make me care about these characters. That's how we're gonna look at it. So we'll see. I will say, still like her writing style. I definitely do. Um, I will also say, maybe the people that say that you can read this as a standalone, technically you can. I'm trying to figure out where the witches went and how the fae got here. Why are there fae involved? I feel like that we probably learned about that in books two and three. However, I skipped that trilogy, so what's happening? Don't know. Hello guys, welcome, welcome. Um, we have a problem. We need to have a little come to Jesus moment. Well, not you, me. And honestly, I'm not the problem. The throne of the fallen is the problem. This book is bad. <laughs> and I loved the Stalking Jack the Ripper series by Carrie Maniscalco. I adored it. It was so good. What is happening with this book? I don't even know. It is just this main character. I can't stand her. Every time she talks, I'm like, no, you're right. You're like so different. No, 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 no. They are shallow. You're really cool though. <laughs> like, I just am so tired of her talking. I do not like this male main character character <laughs> okay character caricature of like the i don't know total bad a like don't care intimidating scary spooky little demon friends <laughs> i don't like him i can't stand him every time he's on page i'm like what if you shut up instead what if that happened oh did i mention i haven't even made it 100 pages in i'm not even a sixth of the way through this book it's closer to 700 pages than i am to the start of it Wait, I don't even know. I'm over it. <laughs> I do know that. And I was thinking, I kept telling myself, okay, just take a break from it. You'll read something else and then you'll go back and read this and you'll be like, oh, actually kind of good. Why was I going to lie to myself? Um, why did I lie to myself? I came back three times, didn't care. I continued to care less and less and less, in fact. You know what? I, I sat down today and I was going to sit and read some more of it and just, I don't know, freaking see if anything changed. It didn't. Hey, still the published copy I got the day it came out. And, um... I realized I'm literally doing this vlog not to review the book so much, but to experience what Goodreads thinks is good romanticy, emphasis on thinks, and choose which one I'm gonna vote for at the end of this little round that's going on. Uh, this one's not getting my vote, so why would I continue to read it? I don't know. I'm, I'm so sorry. If you wanted a review of this from me, I mean, this is my review of it. I, I'm a DNF girl now. I really am. I said in the weekly vlog, I do not rate books unless I DNF them or I give them five stars. And that's just going to be what I keep doing. And this is not giving five stars. This wouldn't even get two stars. This wouldn't even get one star. This is getting zero stars. But I can't do that. So instead, I give it a DNF. <laughs> because I just, I don't, there genuinely is nothing that's going to matter more to me about this and I just feel like I don't know I don't I don't really know what my feelings are for this book to be honest with you I don't really know even Kingdom of the Wicked was so good what happened I don't know I'm just gonna keep asking but I'm still in shock so maybe one day I'll go back and I'll attempt that trilogy again mm -mm. this one I don't like because I don't like either of the characters at all Raph from the first trilogy loved him that was great I even liked the main character too I and that Honestly, I adored the main character in the other series, so I don't know. 
I just don't know. But what I do know is we're not going on any further and we're gonna move on to the next book because I simply, in the year of our Lord 2023, I, I just can't fathom putting myself through a nearly 700 page book where this is how I feel within the first 100 pages. And you know what no one has ever said about this book that I've seen? Push through, it gets better. A lot of the time that happens, right? When books are confusing or really dense or when they um, need to be 700 pages, you're like, oh, but the ending's really worth it or something like that. Looking at you, Sky and Breath. But not even this. Not even this. No one has said that about this. They've either said, oh my god, I loved it so much, five stars, or what was this? And I fall into the second. I really do. We're gonna move on to the next book with that being said. And this is The Weakest Link. Hello. I would like to stop the presses and also alert them that I am finally, finally, finally having a good time with this list of books. I am so excited. You guys, I am reading The Hurricane Wars. This is my fairy loot edition. It came in a little, a little book box. And do I normally like the fairy loot books? Yeah. So did I have hope for this one? Yeah. Did I doubt it a little bit because I did see some early reviews that were super good and then I saw reviews after it came out that were not super good? Yeah. But am I having a great time? Oh yeah. So here's the thing. Um, I don't really know the plot. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if we've gotten there. I don't know if we're gonna get there. I don't know what's going on, but I know what's going on. You know what I mean? Uh, probably not, because what does that mean? But basically, I just, I feel like, hmm. I feel like there is not a solid, this is what is occurring, this is where it's going, this is where we've been, this is where we are, this is where we're going, kind of thing. Yeah, there's like four thick paragraphs right here, for sure. But truly, so I guess what's happening in here is we have our main character who's on one side, and then there is a, Hurricane war going on. Okay, pretty clever. It's a pun, so that's cool. And the love interests, our other main character, is on the other side in the, is it Night Empire? Yeah. She is from an orphanage. She joined this war to help fight on this side against the Night Empire, which is taking over like lots of land. And yeah, apparent like her and the, the, the evil dude, they, what the heck? My fingers are just moving on their own accord. They keep meeting up and tussling and fighting and they've both got like some little powers going on and it's like, ooh, what are these doing together? Uh, but this, I guess I haven't gotten to the, the plot. So I'm on chapter 12, 130 pages in. So I would have thought I got into the plot already, but I haven't. Uh, this little paragraph tells me that something big bad is gonna come out of the ocean. I do love ocean stuff. And apparently only our two main characters can stop it. So they have to team up and I guess fight against this like greater bad thing occurring. Um, so that's what we're gonna get to. But what I'm at right now is I guess just before that's gonna happen. And I'm having a good time. I mean, some of it, the way that it's happening, it's like, where do we go? What is happening right now? But it's not in a way that I like care. I'll be honest, when I go into a book as a fantasy romance, I want there to be fantasy, I want there to be an attempt at world building, an attempt at a plot, attempt at something more than just the romance, but I don't have to have it be as like perfected as I want my soul fantasy books to be. And the same way I don't need the romance to be like super, perfect like I would want like a rom-com romance to be. I'm just less picky on the two because we're kind of, you know, dangling between the two of them. And I really like this. I, I think it's doing that. Like I think the banter between them is good. I think every time they meet up and have their fights, I think those scenes are written the best out of everything that I'm reading and then everything else is just enough to get you intrigued to build up some more of the world and then continue on. Granted, is the world building like the absolute best? I. I guess not. That's one of the biggest complaints I saw, but it's not, honestly, I wouldn't have noticed it if people hadn't pointed it out. I'm just so used to fantasy books that throw you into the world and you have to figure it out as you go that 
this just seems like that to me and that's how it's registering to me i'm not really affected by world building or lack thereof i'm just enjoying it i think that it's got some witty banter i think it's got some snarky little one-liners i am liking everything there was one little plot point that happened uh with our main character who is kind of discovering a lot of things about what's real and what's not and she just like exclaimed like I know who the traitor is like and it was so weird like the way it happened and then we just didn't address it and so I was like wait are we going back to that or is that just like an inside thought I wasn't really sure and like was she just talking that over with her friend or like was that real oh we're not going back there oh okay I mean we still have 400 pages to go back so maybe we will I'm really I'm having a good time. This is what I like in fantasy romance. I think it's good. I also am kind of enjoying the fact that it is written like a fantasy, but it has more sci-fi elements than I thought it would. It reminds me of Pierce Brown's Red Rising Saga in that way of like, it's written like a fantasy. And if they're not in space, it feels like a fantasy book, but you're all like, in spaceships for a lot of that book so you remember it's more sci-fi than fantasy but in here like it feels like we're on a different version of earth or planet or whatever but they have like these flying ships and they have all these different kind of magical things and like technology that's advanced it's just i like that mashup of things and i don't need it to be like explained to me because it's very clear at least how i feel right now that this is not like earth in however many thousands of years like red rising is our solar system in however many thousands of years but this one's not so like i don't need the explanation i'm just like i believe you you made it up who am i to tell you you're wrong it wasn't in my head so yeah i'm just having a good time i'm liking it and i'm so happy to be able to report that i'm liking one of these freaking books so i'm gonna go read it hello it is bucky's and i here to greet you on this fine morning Okay, enough Disney parent figurehead moment. We're getting into the Hurricane Wars, okay? Well, we're getting further into it. Actually, we're finishing. How about that? Um, this is how much I have left. Focus, please. It's, I think, 60 to 70 pages. Yeah, I'm on chapter 35, page 416. And it goes to 470. So, like, less than 60 pages. Let's do math, Olivia. Boop, 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 boop. 54 pages. Ooh. Wow, okay. So we're gonna read it. I'm having a good time. I'm really liking this, by the way. Oh, hey, probably should have read you on that. I'm really enjoying this. Uh, I think this is a great good time. I think this is peak fantasy romance. We have built enough of the world, enough of the magic system, enough of the politics to be like interesting and make up for the lulls and the relationship building portion of the fantasy romance. But it's not taken over the book. Although I wouldn't be upset because this is a very interesting world. This is a very interesting politically. Like I am intrigued. Yeah, I'm gonna shut up for once and start just reading it. Okay, hi. So, this has been secured. This is an Annihilator from Dutch Bros. And yeah, I don't love it the most. The most. But I did get an extra shot so that I would be energized and ready to finish this bookie book. I did switch to using my Kindle to read it because I, I gotta tell y'all, while fairy loot books are beautiful, they are hard to read. Like the binding and just... I don't want to like mess up these edges and things so yeah I'm torn I wish there was a way that I could get these books after I've read them to know if I even want them on my shelves because they're pretty but I don't just want pretty books that I didn't like you know to be overwhelming my shelves but also I find a lot of books I like via fairy loot so it's like what do I what do I do but right now we're gonna do this way so let's go Hello? Hi. I finished the book. I finished the book. And it was so good. It was so good. I am sorry about this setup. 
but it is what it is. It's what I have. This was so good. It wasn't five stars. It wasn't five stars, but it was a very strong four stars. And I'm very happy about it. I will definitely be reading the next one. However, okay, this is what I'll say. So I just messaged a friend about this. It was like the first 40% I would say is very fantasy and it takes a lot of the heavy work of establishing the past of the like main character's relationship, the political arena we are in, and the world building. Basically explaining everything that led up to where we're going to be for the 60% of the book. And do I think it could be done in a better way? Yes, because it was very much, it felt like little clips, little snippets of scenes in like a movie montage of things. It didn't flow very well, I don't think. 60% of the book I think was really good. And I think the 40%, if you enjoy fantasy more than the romance, you will like that that is what we start out with. And then it's a very slow burn. So honestly, I think that this would be perfect for people who like more fantasy than romance. But if you were someone who really likes romance in your fantasy books, I do think that this might be a good one to do to like start getting into books that maybe put fantasy at the forefront and don't prioritize the romance as much just because, you know, it's it is hmm. I would say equal time is spent overall on both. But the way that it's done, I think would be a good intro, honestly, for either kind of reader to maybe get into the other side of things. So if you are a romance reader who wants to get into fantasy, could help with that and vice versa. I just, I really think this is good. This is like a bridge book, I feel, between fantasy and romance. I did not think I was going to like it as much as I did, but it was very intriguing. It was very fun. It was very easy to read. I just really enjoyed it. And that's kind of what I look for in fantasy romance. I'm not going to lie. In fantasy romance, I do not look for the most thematically strong, you know, incredible prose loaded full of just, I, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't look for things within that realm for fantasy romance. I mainly want entertainment. I want entertainment in this genre for myself. When I read other fantasy and sci-fi, I like to look for, you know, heavy themes and I don't know, kind of commentary elements like that. But in fantasy romance, I just want a good time. I want you to build me a little world and then we're just going to have like our little story in there. And that's exactly what this accomplished. I think it did exactly what it needed to do and it did it well and I'm excited for the next one. I guess in my way of like how much am I in love with this series, I probably will not buy the next book unless it is just like drop dead gorgeous or something like that and I want to have matching editions because here's how I feel about it. I could take it or leave it. Um, I want to own the first one and that's kind of what my thing is, is like judging by how much I like the book. If I enjoyed it, but I don't think the series is going to be an all time favorite, Owning the first book is a pretty big deal. Like, it's like, okay, we liked that. It was a good time. It has a space on the shelf. But the rest of the series, owning it, I really could leave or take. And so I feel like that's a good judge of, like, it was good. It was entertaining. I'm not running out to get the next one, but I still really did enjoy it. I think the writing was really easy to read, and I enjoyed that. I liked the characters. There were some gaps I feel with a few side characters actions and whereabouts and just things like that that I think were attempts at like mystery and misdirection and things like that that I don't think were done super well but they weren't like you know horrible so it's not really points against it it's just an observation this is a good time so now we are gonna move on to our next book
Y'all, this was the fastest turnaround time on a book for this video. Let me freaking tell ya. So, hi. Um, the Foxglove King. I was not gonna vote for that book. I read a few pages and I was like, this is not to my liking. <laughs> and then I continued reading a little bit. I read a few chapters and I, I stuck with, wow, I don't like this. Now the concept was really cool. I liked the idea and it seemed very, I don't know. It seemed like a fantasy romance kind of tropey book, but with its own unique little twisty twist. And then I was reading it and I'm like, oh, it's not, it's not that. And also, I don't like the writing. <laughs> so this one was a quick, a quick no. I don't know if I'm going to completely unhaul it yet or if I'm gonna give it another try. Cause this has happened with books before where I go to read it and I'm like, mm -mm. not right now. And then I go back and I freaking love it. One book this happened with was Daughter of No Worlds by Chris Broadbent. I was like, whoa, not in the mood. And then I go back and I'm like, oh my God, where have you been all my life? And I also think that would happen with Blood Mercy by Vera Roth. So, but not right now. We're on time crunch. I don't have time for books that aren't having a good time. So no thank you and respectfully, next. So the next that we're talking about. I have my little cup of, cup of joe. <laughs> it's beanie season, I turn into like a mountain man, I guess. But um, I've started the Jusat Air. I am on chapter six, I am 86 pages into this. I read 86 pages yesterday in like two sittings. I read that much, which is a lot for a Orbit book because typically Orbit is just straight up fantasy. It's not romanticy and so, I also have a little bit of a question of, here's the thing. Is this book in the fantasy romance category because it's fantasy with a romance? Or is it in there because it is a fantasy that is not written by a man? And hold your answer because it doesn't quite matter because either one's wrong. <laughs> because a fantasy with a romance is simply not a fantasy romance. That's not, that's not how that works. Like you have to have specific elements that lend itself to a fantasy romance. Cause that's like a joint term. It's like a, it's a, it's a thing. Okay. It's a thing. Trust me. Just trust me. I am really enjoying this. I do, I do love a good Egyptian inspired fantasy. I'll tell you what. Uh, but in here we have our main character who was the, still is the heir, the long lost heir to the Jassad throne and this kingdom had magic, lots and lots of it, and was overthrown, burned to the ground. It's called the Scorched Throne, the series is. And they refer to that as the Scorched Kingdom several times. And she is currently living in a smaller village. And if anyone has magic, it's outlawed, it's banished, and you pretty much die if you have it. So it's not like a good time. She is obviously successfully hiding hers and she's kind of made a little bit of a life for herself, but you can definitely tell with the things that are taking place, she's getting ready to make like it everybody's problem. And I'm excited to see that because it should be. This is like written so well. I really, don't know, actually I know why I'm surprised. I don't know why I'm surprised though because it's an Orbit fantasy and so yes, and it is like, it's written really well and I can see the romantical elements, but that doth not make a fantasy romance. So that's where I'm like a little eh with it. So I would have seen this in the fantasy category and been like, yeah, she belongs at the table. But then if I saw it at fantasy romance, I'm like, but it's just a fantasy book that's got like a love interest. That's so many fantasy books. In fact, I have not read a fantasy book that doesn't have a romantic entanglement at some point. So whatever, whatever. Goodreads again, didn't ask me. I don't know why they keep doing that. Like they really should come to me for counseling, but. It's fine. It's fine, they think they're better, they think they know better, and that's fine. Clearly they're doing so well. Everyone was so happy this year. <laughs> I'm enjoying it. I think that there's going to be, the, the, the love interest, I think, allegedly, supposedly, no confirmation. So this is just me conspiracy speculating. I think that it's gonna be this like prince dude that's, you know, super scary and like the warlord, of course, because why wouldn't it be? And he's looking for a champion. So I'm thinking that there's gonna be some like games thing 
and I think she's gonna be the champion. I didn't read the synopsis, can you tell? Let me read the synopsis. Okay, so you wanna know what it is? Um, first of all, I was right about the love interest, I think. And then also, it's that she accidentally shows her magic in front of him. He's like, what's that about? And then she is now forced to make a deal with her greatest enemy. Help him hunt the rebels in exchange for her life. Not very fair, but I see it. I see it for the plot. And then she has to hide like her actual identity from him. And so I think it's gonna be interesting. I'm hoping that she becomes the champion and then that way it's like a little bit more of an intrigue there. But either way, I'm having a good time. The writing is really good. And I am about to head out for a, a doctor's appointment. So I'm gonna bring it with me. It's one of those books, this is very rare for me with fantasy, but it's one of those fantasy books where I can actually read little bits at a time and it sticks with me. Usually I really have to work to immerse myself in a fantasy book, complete with the ambiance room on YouTube and everything. But this one, I'm able to just pick it up and read little snippets at a time. So that's exciting. It will be coming with me as my emotional support book today. And I will read some more and I will let you know what I think about it, because it's way better than Foxglove King, I'll tell you that. Is my tree on during the day? Yes. And, okay, hi guys. I, you know that trend of everyone doing like the silent book reviews? My book review right now. It's good. I'm on chapter 19 page 249 so i have literally half this book left and it's saturday hey this is going up tomorrow <sighs> not to break the fourth wall but we're gonna have to speed run this thing and honestly i'm so glad that i trusted my instincts and i saved this for last because this last half of this video we did it we did it i really feel like i read these books in order of what i would rank them and i was right See, this is why I don't really rate books low anymore because I just don't read the low books. <laughs> I just read ones I like. And this genuinely might be a five star, maybe a 4.75, but very, very close to a five star. Like I'd put it a five star on Goodreads, but it's probably like a 4.75 as of now. I am sensing with the way things are going, there are gonna be twists and turns and I think it's gonna end up being a five. I just do. I think I'm gonna be shocked. And I'm excited about that. So yeah, let's, let's finish it. Starting out with a peace sign. Strong sign. Um, hey, I am now another 100 pages in. So I officially have, I think a hundred and, let's see. This is 480, I'm on 322. Yeah, I have like 160 pages left. Right here, right here's what I got left, babes. This is, this is just so good. Um, I'm a little shocked that it's a debut. I'm gonna be honest with you. I've had this talk with multiple people, but I feel like the debuts this year just haven't been as good as previous and it's not that they were bad but it for some reason it almost just feels like they didn't have enough time in the editing oven if you will or if you won't because i don't know how else to describe it but it just feels like it could have the debuts not this one this one she's perfect but some of the others i've read this year it just feels like they needed a little bit more maybe tweaking on some scenes they could have cut out a few things like it was long-winded I've seen that trend in books in general. They just keep getting longer and longer. Luckily, I like long books, but still, even I, even I can admit when they need to be cut down a little bit. And um, I just feel, I just feel like this one is, this one's good. This one's so good. They even had like a little, not a ball scene, but like a very serious dinner scene. And it was like tension filled and in a fun angsty way, but also in like a, is someone going to literally kill someone right now? Don't do it. Do it. Yes, I'm having a great time. I can't remember if I told y'all what this is about, but it, the part that I'm getting to is the portion of this where she is now indebted to one of the heirs of this like kingdom thing, and she is his what champion is it? Yeah, champion. And so she is gonna compete against the other champions, which means 
she's gonna try to be alive longer than they are and the plan that she's been told is to get rid of them during this not duel but just these different trials essentially and I just I here's the thing this book we're 160 pages out we've been trained we, well we've been introduced to the world this is an adult fantasy so it's different but we've been introduced to the world we've been developing the relationships developing her past then we moved right into training developing more of the world broadening it bringing in the political intrigue and the different kind of parties that are going to be involved in that and now we are finally finally at 320 pages out of 480 getting into the beginnings of the trials which to me is a great sign because I feel when books involve trials uh, the Hunger Games is one of the ones that this did not happen with because of Catching Fire being what it was about when the trials are in the first game there's such a beautiful setup and you know you know exactly the structure is gonna follow it's very well put together because it has that solid structure that sometimes the second book gets a little meandering. I would say a good example of that would be The Prison Healer and The Gilded Cage. The Gilded Cage was good. The Prison Healer just had more structure to it because of the trials within it. I'm very happy that the trials are towards the end because I don't think that they're going to be able to do all four because first before it even begins, unless they do the trials in between visiting the different realms I'm calling them but I can't remember the terminology for it but just the different territories that are hosting all of it I think there's four champions in total four heirs and so they're gonna travel to each one we're at the first one and there's already been some kind of going on <laughs> and yeah I, I, yeah I'm excited so I have made an afternoon coffee um, truly, it's just ice with some coffee in it. That's the best kind of iced coffee to have. I don't know, but I'm excited. We're gonna get into it. Nay, we're gonna finish it. So let's go, because I'm having a, what a good book to end the video on. Okay. <laughs> That's fine, that's fine. Because this... This is me trying to reverse so I can go back. I love this. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. The showers in the background, we don't, it's not for me. Hey, not wasting water. Just explaining that. And there's a very over it Jacob just hanging out, uh, but he's fine. He's, you just saw, how, yeah, lives like a king. But this book, speaking of royalty. Oh my God. This is amazing. This was fantastic. This was show stopping show. Honestly, this is the show. This is the only show. Every other show dropped because the stars arrived. I loved this. Did you, can you tell I gave it five stars? <laughs> we found a five stars, guys. We found a five stars. This takes the winning place. Now, hey, you might be thinking, you finished this two days after it was announced, or, or three days. No, one day. So I'm just wondering if you guys know that time's a construct, because <laughs> I'm losing it. I didn't get to vote for this. I would have. I was a silly, goofy gal, and I, um, well, I voted for conquer, vampire conquer, conquer vampire, vampire who conquers other vampires, whatever that one, Chris Robbent. Hey, and you know what? That's fine. If it came down to it, that would be the other one I voted for. But this is the one I wanted. This is the one I wanted to vote for. However, I will add, this is... This is not a fantasy romance. To me, I would not pitch it as that. However, how stick with me, stick with me. The more excited and more I like a book, the more I make hand gestures. Let's sit on our hands, guys, because chill out. If you are a fantasy romance girl who wants, or guy, wh whoever, who wants to get into more of fantasy, you know, like, I, I do feel like sometimes 
certain genres can be a little intimidating. For me, it's sci-fi. So I find sci-fi fantasy books to kind of, you know, weasel my way into that genre, right? I feel like this is the weasel for the genre of fantasy. If you are coming from particularly the romance to fantasy romance pipeline that seems to be happening a lot uh, currently, uh, which I love because, hey, fantasy books, absolute favorite. I think that this is the perfect one because, because there is a huge plot that is it's within the whole book. However, I need to stop using that word. Moreover, <laughs> I think that the romance in here rivals that in percentage of like how much it takes up in the book. And I loved every second of it because the way that this author built both up so slowly, meticulously, and dare I say perfectly, was fabulous and a treat to read. And I just am so happy. I'm so happy with this book. And we really ended this on a high note, you guys. We really, really did. I also want to say, specifically, I, I, I'm not doing books by recommendation of like tropes anymore. To me, slow burn is a pacing thing. It's not really a trope. Um, so that's why I'm gonna mention this. In here, the slow burnage of this romance is akin to the Darcy hand hold vibes. So if you like that, hey, recommend. Uh, but yeah, this, this, if I, if I had not forgotten what day it was, I don't know what my laptop's right there. It's the night. I just missed it. Yeah, I would have voted for this. I would have voted for this. I just, I didn't time it well and I didn't plan it out. But this is the vote in my heart. Sorry. It is. Okay, so now that we had that little moment together, the official final ranking. Shall we discuss it? So we did, we did, we pretty much actually went from eh to eh to eh, 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 that's the bumpiness to eh eh basically is how this video went uh, with the ranking being in eighth place, Foxglove King. Will I give this one another shot? Upon further reflection and plus also uh, discussion with other bookish pals, probably not. Uh, probably not gonna, probably not, probably not, no. So that's great. Seventh place, A Court So Cruel and Lovely. Maybe I will give this another chance because one of the people that has the most similar fantasy romance taste to me rated it four stars and that is pretty high for her. So we may, we may venture back, but it'll have to be enough time for me to forget the, f the much feeling, the much feelings that I did not like about that book, but not enough time that I forget what I read because I surely won't read it again. I won't. Then in sixth place, we have Throne of the Fallen. This one, I'm still teetering back and forth if I'll go back to it because I love Maniscalco's writing and I really enjoy her. So I'm like, what is happening? But it just, I don't know. I'm gonna need to see some more people who I align with fantasy romance wise to give it more than a three star because I don't know if I could go through 700 pages to be like, eh, eh, what do you mean? I could have read six other books in that time. In fifth place, we have Fourth Wing. I'm surprised it's this low. If you think about it, it's the lowest on the list because the other ones I DNF'd. So those are really only in those category, those places because I just didn't read them. That's it. Is it a little resentment towards Iron Flame? For sure. For sure, it's carrying over. But also, I gotta be honest, with the other three that are above it, it oh, actually four. My bad. Math. It's hard. Uh, this it's, it's not as good. It's just not as good. Then in fourth place, we have Assistant to the Villain. That was just a fun little goofy time. I really liked it. Then in third place, we have Slaying the Vampire Conqueror. Again, that is a... I really don't like standalone fantasies making me like them. I liked that. That was perfect. I would I would highly recommend that, especially if you are new to fantasy romance and you just want to swan dive, do it. It's vampires. Hello? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Go. Go forth. And then second place, we have the Hurricane Wars. I'll be honest, Hurricane Wars and Slaying the Vampire Conqueror are tied to me a little bit, except, except the world that we were in in Hurricane Wars tipped it over and it gave it just a little advantage over Slaying the Vampire Conqueror. But still, both really good. Hurricane Wars, just I really like that world. And then our final one is the Jassad Air, which I'm still debating. I would love to hear what you think about this being a fantasy romance, if you have read it or just based on what you've heard and the like. But 
yeah, this was good. This was a good time. This is a good video. I really liked this. Hopefully, hopefully we can get a bit better <laughs> options within the 20 next year if this category is still going to be a thing because I mean, three books from the same author. You notice I didn't read them. No, thank you. I'm not putting myself through that. Not three times over. Absolutely not. And then the eighth book in a series. That is wild. Hopefully we get some better. Hopefully we get some debuts in there. We get a more diverse range of things. I would really like to see that more high, low, medium fantasy kind of things, but we'll see. We'll see what they do if they do it again. Cause you know, Goodreads is a fickle thing, but yeah. Leave a, I'm gonna say, a black and a purple emoji for the number one and number two books because those are really good and that'll be it from me today so make sure that you stay hydrated drink your water be kind and have a good day on purpose and i'll see you later hear the birds and see the sun side by side our fears are done all the good times just begun